Welcome back to Quick Movie Recap. Today, I am going to explain an American prison thriller film named Escape from Alcatraz, released in the year 1979. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In early 1960, Frank Morris, an exceptionally intelligent criminal who has absconded from other facilities, arrives at the maximum security prison on Alcatraz Island. Frank is brought in and a doctor comes start to examine him thoroughly from top to bottom, then he is taken to his cell on the locked. The guard welcomes him to Alcatraz. Next morning, the guards patrol the cell block. After checking, the cell doors are opened. And the prisoners make their way to the dining hall. A man named English advises Frank to button up his shirt. The prisoners receive their breakfast and Frank sits at a table. He questions why they have no forks to eat with, only spoons. As he looks across the hall, a man named Wolf stares at him and eats his pasta in such manner that Frank loses his appetite and offers his pasta to an old man named Litmus, who is sitting opposite to him. The old man takes it and feeds some to a mouse that is perched on his knee. Frank looks across and Wolf is still staring while burning a match. Later, Frank is taken to see the warden. He says that if one disobeys the laws of society, then he or she is sent to prison. But if he disobeys the laws of prison, then he is sent to Alcatraz. The prisoners are restricted to two visitors per month. When he is asked who he would like to visit, he says that no one comes to mind. The warden knows that he has escaped from prisons in the past but no one has ever escaped from Alcatraz and no one ever will. As Frank leaves, the warden clips his nails and reads Frank's file that states he has a superior IQ, without knowing that Frank has stolen one of the nail clipper. Back in his cell, Frank flicks through a Bible before, all the inmates take a shower. Litmus is bathing his mouse. Wolf approaches and washes next to Frank. Frank tells him that he has been transferred from Atlanta. Wolf tries to get friendly with Frank, but Frank responds by punching him in the stomach and feeding him a bar of soap. Later, Frank is sent to the library to work with English. English tells him to take a book cart to the cells. English explains that the inmates are not allowed in here. He tells Frank that ten years ago, he was attacked by two men with knives and he managed to kill them. They were white so he received two 99-year sentences. Frank leaves with the book cart to D-block. As he walks down past the cells, the guard prevents him from going any further. He tells him that there are no lights in the cells down here. In the yard outside, an old man named Doc is painting a self-portrait. Frank asks about the flower that he has painted on his jacket and he tells him that it represents something inside that they can't lock up. He warns Frank that because he hurt Wolf, he will now get revenge. Frank tries to walk up some steps where all the black men are sitting. They try to stop him but English tells them to let him through. English explains that the higher you sit up the steps, then the more important you are. Frank tries to walk away and English asks if he didn't sit with him on the top step because he is scared or because he hates black men. Frank sits down and jokes that he just hates black men. They discuss that no one has ever escaped from Alcatraz. English explains that the bars are made up of six smaller bars. The prison is set on a rock so he can't make a tunnel. The rock is over a mile from the city and the water is cold so Frank can't swim back to the mainland. There are twelve head counts per day. Just then, the bell goes and everyone returns to their cells. Sometime later, Frank is assigned a job in the carpentry shop. Litmus also works there. He tells Frank that he steals the glue so that he can sniff it to help pass the time. Doc warns Frank that Wolf is coming towards him with a knife. Frank spins around and they fight. A guard tries to intervene and he is grazed with the knife. More guards comes and warns Wolf and he is restrained. He is then sent to D-block to rot for a long time. Frank is then also sent there despite his protests. As they enter, Wolf threatens Frank. Again before they are both locked in dark cells. The sun rises and Frank is hosed down in his cell by a guard, who warns him that the warden doesn't like them fighting. Time passes and Frank is eventually returned to his own cell. He spies Litmus Mouse carrying a note welcoming him back. A guy named Charlie is in Frank's neighboring cell. He introduces himself and they go for yard time. They meet Litmus. Doc reveals that he has almost finished a painting of the warden. The warden is inspecting the cells and drops his nail clippers in Doc's cell. 
He goes in to pick it up and looks at his paintings. He notices the portrait of himself and isn't amused. He tells the deputy warden to remove his painting privileges. The guard removes his equipment and Doc is distraught because painting is all he has. A guard is doing target practice as the men are taken to the workshop. Frank notices that Doc is upset and asks the guard to keep an eye on him. The guard doesn't care. Back in his cell, Frank notices a cockroach escape through a grill and bends down to examine. English arrives with the book cart and tells him that Doc has cut off his fingers because the warden removed his painting privileges. At dinner, Frank implies to the warden that he is responsible for Doc's accident. Frank sits with some new arrivals, John and Clarence. That night, Frank starts to chip away at the concrete around the grill using the nail clippers. He stops as he hears a guard approach and hides them in the Bible. On Charlie's birthday, he and Frank are sitting on the steps. He tells Frank that. He was sent to Alcatraz for car theft. He and English are called to see some visitors. English is being visited by his daughter, Charlie by his wife. Charlie's wife. Tells him that his mother only has a few months to live. Later in the cell, Charlie tells Frank that if he tries to escape then he wants to join him. At dinner, Frank reveals that he may have found a way out. He says that the walls are crumbling with age so over time they should be able to break out of the cell block. If they do it at night they will have more time. Clarence can get hair from the barber shop so that they can make some realistic dummies. John works in the clothing shop and can make a raft and life jackets out of raincoats. They will go to Angel Island rather than San Francisco. Frank digs while Charlie keeps watch. He realizes that it is a difficult job as the clippers have no grip, so he steals a spoon from the dining hall whilst John distracts the guard. He asks English to explain how to weld two pieces of metal together in the cell and then asks Litmus to give him a dime. Using some basic equipment, he manages to attach the blade from the clippers to the spoon handle. This makes the job easier. Suddenly a guard approaches and Frank just manages to hide his work. He steals a wedge from the workshop to help force the grill off. It is successful and he puts his head through to check. Charlie and the others complete the same job from their cells. They use magazines to make paper mache dummies and covers for the open grills. Charlie orders paint supplies which they use to paint the dummies' heads. One night, Frank does a trial run and the guard is fooled by the dummy head in his bed. He finds that there are bars above that he can't reach so next time he takes John to give him a boost. He sees that there is a sealed shaft beyond the bars. Sometime later, he spies a desk fan and arranges to trade his desserts with Litmus for a drill bit and an extension lead from the workshop. He conceals the fan in his accordion case and takes it back to the cell. With this equipment, he manages to produce a drill to help get through the shaft. As he tries to break through, they are almost heard by a guard, but he moves on without discovering them. The guys plan to leave on Tuesday night. During mealtime, they have a flower on the table. The warden crushes it and in his fury, Litmus has a heart attack. Frank kneels down to attend to the body as the mouse runs away. The warden tosses the flower at him. Afterwards, English delivers some books that Frank requested and they shake hands. English says, so long. Later, Frank's cell is inspected but the warden finds nothing. He decides that Frank will be moved to other cells on Tuesday morning. On Monday, Wolf is released from D-Block after six months and threatens Frank in the dining hall. Frank decides that they should all leave this evening instead. In the yard, Wolf approaches Frank but before he can do anything, English intervenes and takes Wolf to the steps to talk. When lights goes out, the guys begin to make their escape. Charlie says that he will join them later and weeps in his bed as the guard does his rounds. The guys squeeze through the bars and remove the shaft cover. The noise alerts a guard who checks with a searchlight but sees nothing. All three men climb onto the roof with the life rafts that they have made. They wear their life jackets and climb down the walls. Clarence rips his life jacket. So they remove them so as not to do it again before they climb over a fence. Meanwhile, Charlie has followed but is too late and unable to reach the bars. The guys reach the shore and begin to inflate the raft. Charlie realizes that he has missed his opportunity as the others drift away. The next morning, the guard tries to wake Frank, telling him that it's already late. 
he suddenly realizes that Frank is not there and sounds the alarm. English watches on, grinning. A helicopter searches for the escapees. The warden steps out and speaks to a policeman. He suspects that they may have drowned. As they search the island, he finds the same kind of flower that he had crushed. A man arrives instructing the warden that he has been summoned to Washington. The man ponders that with a nine and a half hour head start that maybe they made it. The warden insists that they drowned. He throws the flower into the sea. The men were never found and Alcatraz was closed one year later. Here the movie ends. That was all from the movie. Subscribe for more content like this. And leave a like to help the channel. Also leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie take care.